Well, this video is going to be about function notation. And what that means is sometimes you see these funny symbols like this. Maybe it'll say h of x. Maybe it'll say population for some time. And they're usually part of some equation, or if we call this a function. It might say f of x equals x plus 3, or population for some time can be given with this formula. Maybe you have to square the time and then add 5 or something. These are just functions, and these three right here are just fancy ways of saying that y value that you've been seeing in your lower math classes. Like the first one would just say y equals x plus 3. So you see this notation right here. Don't be intimidated by that. All that means is the y value, and this y value is related to this x value over here. Like here the y value is always whatever your x is plus 3 or maybe your population which depends on time like if you want to know the population after 10 years you would plug in a 10 here and get 10 squared plus 5 so the population after 10 years would be 105 so that's all these mean right here is function notation it's just a fancy way of saying the y value but it may not always be a y like I said maybe it'll be a population or maybe it'll be a height many times in upper level classes you'll see this height for some time is given by negative 16 t squared plus 32 t let's say plus 500 or something and this is just a function that gives a height if you know a time value like if you threw a football or you maybe hit a golf ball off of a 500 foot tall building this function right here would give you the height after some time. So what you do is if you want to know the height after let's say one second if time is measured in seconds. Well the height for one second would be plug in ones here. Negative 16 times 1 squared is 1 plus 32 times 1 plus 500 and you do this little computation right here and you get 516. So the height after one second would be 516 say feet or whatever your units are for your height. And so this is just function notation right here. If you want to know what a function is used for, many times it's used to model a scenario. Okay. So you might want to know the height after three seconds. And again that would just be you stick threes in here instead. Negative 16 times 3 squared is 9 plus 32 times 3 plus 500. So I just put a 3 in right there and a 3 in right there and if I did this right here I would get uh, what uh, 452 that would be the height after 3 seconds. And so what this is telling me is if I started at 500 like I said and I hit it one second the golf ball is 516 feet after three seconds the golf ball is 452 feet it must mean it's going down right here so so this is what function notations are for what I've just done in these two instances right here is evaluate a function or in other words find a value find a height value for any time or find find a dependent value for any independent value these don't always have to be X's and Y's, as you see here. Sometimes it's H's and T's. Okay, so I could have found these values also sometimes by looking at a graph. So let me draw a graph for you real quick. Let's say I have a building here that's, uh, we'll say, 500 feet tall. And so we'll say that 500 is right here. And let's say I threw a football off of this building. And so this kind of would look like this. And this would be sort of modeling the path of that football. And so after one second, we can see that we're 516 feet. So right here at one second, we can see we're slightly higher than this 500 we started out at. And so that's what functions tell you. It tells you a y value not always y though but in this instance it's y for any x value or in this problem right here these are heights for any time value so it doesn't have to be x's and y's <clears throat> so
after one second we're at 516 feet we can see over here after three seconds we are at 452 feet so maybe three seconds since 452 is less than 500 the graph would be over here somewhere after three seconds so if I wanted to ask you maybe when would this ball hit the ground which would be right here you'd notice the height at that point is zero so you could instead of substituting a number in for here you can also substitute a number in for y or h in this case See, I could say that 0 equals negative 16t squared plus 32t plus 500. And I'd stare at this for a long time and try to figure out what I could plug in for a t to make that a 0. Okay, no, I wouldn't. Actually, what I would do is maybe try to factor this or use the quadratic formula. Those are things you learned in Algebra 2. You could also maybe look at a graph. Let's see over here on the graph that I'm see about maybe six or seven so when time is about six or seven my height would be zero or in other words the ball would hit the ground but obviously a graph is not as accurate though as using quadratic formula or factoring but those are things you already learned that's not what this lesson is about but that is basically all a function is about you sometimes you plug in values for your independent variable, in this case your time, or most times this would be an x right here. Sometimes you would plug in a value for that. Like if I just came up and asked you, what is h of 1? What you do is you plug in a 1 right here and right here. And that's what I did on this line. Here I the question would have been something like, what is the h of 3 or the height after 3 seconds? And so you would plug in 3's. Remember this said t squared, so that made that a 9 and this said t. Sometimes I might ask you what time value would give you a certain height. So in that case, the height is given, you want to find a time value. So many times, the functions are just y's and x's on standard kind of worksheet type problems that are really mundane and they look like this sometimes or, you know, whatever. Like I said, they're not always x's and y's. This is just a fancy way of writing y. If I asked you what is the y value when x is 2, well, you'd just say, I'm going to stick a 2 in right there and see what my function's value is when x is 2. And this would be a 5. So that tells me when x is 2, my y coordinate is 5. Or back at my height problem, if it looked like this, height for some time would be my time plus 3 seconds, or plus 3 units. If I wanted a height after 2 seconds, that would be 2 plus 3, or 5 feet, or whatever my units are. So that's how you find function values algebraically. Sometimes you might have a table. down here. Let's say your table looked like this and I asked you what is h of 1. Well this table just gives you values all these quote unquote y values for these certain x values. So if I asked you what is h of 1 this is my x value and this is my h function that I'm looking at. So what I'm really looking for is I'm going to look for my h function and find out when x is 1. So here's my h function. Here's when x is 1. So this answer is a 3. So the height after 1 second would be 3 if this was what that was representing. Let's say I asked you for g of 2. So this tells me find my g function, see when x is 2. So my g value when x is 2 is right here, 6. See, this is my g line, here's my x equals 2 line, so here's 6. And so sometimes, maybe you have to know more information, like there might be more of this table. And sometimes it might say, like, h of h of 3. 
which would not be on this table. But if this was changed to be h of h of 1, that could be done with this table. So what you would do is you'd start with the innermost part and just find h of 1. Okay, so here's my h, here's h of 1, so h of 1 is 3. So I'll put a 3 in that box right there. And now it says h of 3. Remember I put a 3 in the box, and here's my new problem, h of 3. Well, that can be found, h of 3 is 9. So sometimes they might ask you to compose two functions and find two at once. So that's how you do that. So here's another example of a composition where maybe I might ask you to find g of h of 2. So first you try to find h of 2. Or in other words, find your h function. Here's where 2 is. So h of 2 is 1. So this 1 would go in this spot right here, and now I have a new problem, g of 1. So g of 1 is, here's my g function, here's 1, so g of 1 is 2. So compositions aren't that bad, but they look intimidating.